Welcome, this is Stay Strong, reminding us to stay strong in the Lord, reminding myself to stay strong in the Lord, reminding you to stay strong in the Lord, and understand that the Lord is with us, whether you're male, female, child, adult, Christ died for you, and once we know that, we're able to see that there is no condemnation when we are in Christ. On that note, today's brief devotion is called how to handle condemnation and we have some verses here directly from the bible to understand how how people are uh wrongfully accused and what happened to christ and we are to follow in his footsteps and inevitably things will happen where where we need to get separated from the world in order to receive jesus so let us have a quick word of prayer and get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are, for uh, everybody uh, who is within the hearing of my voice. I pray for each and every one of our families. And as we open up the study, I pray, or we all pray, that you be the one guiding and that you are the one that uh, reveals things as you would have us understand it and not we of our own self. You are the teacher, and we thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Yes, Christ is the teacher. Right at this moment, I'm just a facilitator. So, I'm your host. I think that sounds about right. Let us get started. Uh, let's go straight to Luke, Luke 6, 22 through 23. We'll go straight, straight to the source. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake now we're going to stop right there and take a look at what it says blessed are ye when men hate you when they shall separate you from their company now what is it that they did to christ he was in the synagogues and his supposed people, because they were uh, Pharisees and then the people who would follow the Pharisees, thinking the Pharisees had all the answers, the congregation would follow along because they were like, it was like a control. They had a control over everything. Then Christ, he would come to the synagogues and they didn't like the way he was preaching, even though they were preaching about God uh, and they, they kicked him out of the synagogues. They separated him. Well, what happens? We get separated from the world. We get separated from our people because of our belief. And as we get closer to the closing of time, we need to rely on Jesus because he says that he's the one who plucks us out of the fire. And it takes some time to adjust. It takes some time to adjust. It says here, they will reproach you and cast your name as evil. So they're going to talk to you or talk about you just as they do as someone that is evil. And Jesus himself said, they even told him that he had demons. Okay, it says, rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. Leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So it wasn't only Jesus. It was the prophets too. Christ's followers. John 15, 18 through 21. It says, If the world hate you, ye know 
that it hated me before it hated you. So if the world hates you, now, first we were talking about the synagogues, but now if the world hates you, what happens? Well, of course they're going to hate you. They hate you. You could be in the church and still be in the world. I mean, if you if you have a, a callous, cold, un, you know, that spirit, it's the same spirit. It's just inside the church with information from the Bible. But it says, if the world hates you, ye know it also hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, so he plucked you out of the world, he chose you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the world, sorry, remember the word that I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. I know these, we think we're going to go into a light study, but this is very deep. And some people try to avoid this study because we have to have faith in everything sweet, but they're going to persecute. And I'm talking about using even your own people. And we need to rely on Jesus. Jesus says, you will know them by the fruit, for they shall speak of me and not of themselves. So it's about Christ. There's, there's nothing in between. Nothing you holding us back but ourselves from giving ourselves fully to Christ. Mind, body, and soul. The spirit is his. It's a gift. And if we preserve it and we feed the spirit that is given to us, we will surely be in the road through sanctification. That's another study. Let us keep going. Remember the word I said unto you. Remember that, and it also says remember, that the servant is not greater than his Lord. If ye have persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also because the spirit will recognize it as being truth. But all these things I will, they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they not know him who has sent me because they don't know God themselves for themselves. They will persecute us if we are abiding in Jesus, not just have information, but experience the walk of Jesus Christ. My name is Rand Campbell. This is Flat Out Elected. I want to first thank Stay Strong for her perfectly timed message for the days that we are in because the timing couldn't be any better and the lord has pressed upon me today to talk about the times that we are in the division the hate and the censorship of anything that we know to be true against everything that we know to be a deception in this world you know when you live in a system designed by a deceiver that hasn't got the truth in them. How you could ever expect there to be truth in that system, especially if you claim to be a Christian, is beyond me. This world is greatly deceived, and as you wake up and, and begin to look at Scripture in a deeper and more meaningful way, the Scriptures, the Word of God, that is applicable to the ways that we are living and to the times that we are in and to the divisions that are being exposed and everything that is happening all at once at a thousand miles an hour in a million directions becomes very clear to those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Now, censorship is very, very apparent on the Internet. It's apparent on street preaching in the real world, and it's even more apparent on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and any other social media platform where you would take as a platform to tell the truth. It's apparent. There's, there's no arguing it. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of people that are recognizing the censorship on specific truths 
And because they understand how censorship works, that it's actually the hushing up or the killing of truth, they're actually now looking into it because that's exactly what ends up happening. If you tell somebody a truth and people tell you to be quiet and don't speak about it, then it's going to get the listener or somebody that happenstances across that message to take a second or third look because now they want to know why it's being censored. But he, here, here's a very, very strong truth, and I've said this before. Jesus Christ is the original truther. He is the very first truther this world has ever known. The very first truther. All, all truths come from him. And he came to this world in the flesh in order to speak the truth to a world that simply did not want to hear it. So what did they do with the truth? When Jesus Christ was professing the truth in this deceived world, what exactly was it that those that did not want the truth to be known, what, what, what did they do? Before I give you that answer, let's look at when Jesus Christ was in the tomb and then he came out of the tomb and the soldiers that were there to watch witnessed him come out of the tomb and then they ran back to tell the Roman soldiers of which the religious got in the way. The, the religious stopped them and the religious paid them to not tell the truth of what they actually saw. Which makes you understand that, that the, the true enemy is on the inside of the church, not the outside. But they were censored in that they were told not to tell the actual truth of what they witnessed in Christ being resurrected. But let's go to the cross. When Jesus yells out, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They were censoring him. They were killing the truth. They were shutting up the truth on that cross. What happened to Christ on that cross cannot be argued in any other way than it was absolute censorship. And that's why he says they hated me first. So if you, listening to this video, are somebody that is proclaiming the truth in this deceived world in these days, you are absolutely going to be confronted with censorship. Whether it's censorship in your own families, whether your mother, your father, your brother, your wife, your husband, somebody is telling you, no, no, don't talk about that. I experienced this, by the way. I experienced this with somebody that was supposed to have my back and be very close to me. And they told me to not talk about the truth. Just don't, 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 don't get into those conversations. And it ended up causing a big separation in our relationship. Because those of us of which whom are really, truly in truth and being a voice for and being a voice for truth, we, we can't be hushed. As Christ was not hushed, as Christ never, never, ever accepted being told not to speak or not to be able to warn the people or expose the deceptions and tell the truth of the world that, that, that he came to save, the same way he wasn't to be hushed. We're not going to be hushed. We're going to stand our ground on this truth. And for that reason, they are going to do everything in their power to censor us. Even if it takes pulling out the guillotines at some point. Which, if you've ever done a study on the guillotines that have been brought into America via all of these trains and all of these different means of bringing them in, and as well, uh, military accounts of being trained on how to use the guillotine. If you've done any study in that direction, then you, you know that Scripture is correct in that the guillotines will come out against Christians at some point. For now, they're going to try to hush the truth that you're not allowed to speak the truth. They're going to make it that you can't speak the truth. They're going to try to censor your platforms so that you can't just come out and talk the truth. They, they don't want to hear it because it goes against the world and the world is greatly deceived. The evil one, the one that runs this world, is a great deceiver, and he has deceived this world so greatly that there are those that are in positions of power jobs where they, they work at YouTube, they work at Facebook, they work at Twitter, Instagram, all these platforms, and when they get a case put in front of them like Flat Out Elected or any of these other channels, they're told to review these channels, and they make decisions based on whether or not those channels will be censored, and make no mistake about it, the people that they put in order to review this channel or any other channel of this nature is going to be an atheist, God-hating, truth-hating, Christ-rejecting person. 
They're not going to put a Christian who's awake at YouTube to look at my videos and say, should we censor this guy? Because if they did put somebody that was awake and in Christ to censor this channel, they're going to say, no, 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 this channel's got to stay up on YouTube, and we got to do everything in our power to push his messages because he's right. So you already know the people that are doing the censoring at these platforms, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the people that are looking at these videos to make the decision on whether or not these videos should be banned or censored, you can, you can rest assured those people are not in truth and could care less about the truth. As a matter of fact, they're in those positions for that exact reason. They don't want the truth out. Because the truth brings the walls down that have imprisoned humanity through the deceptions of this world. Jesus Christ was the very first truther, period, dot, period. They censored him by killing him on the cross. They figured if they killed him, the truth would end right there on that cross. But there were enough disciples and enough people that had known Christ and come to know Christ and understood his truth and were going to continue his truths by speaking them. And that's what we have today. But all of the disciples, they censored too with death. Make no mistake about that. The ultimate censorship of truth is to cut off the head of truth. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to try to cut the head off true Christians who take God at his word and expose this world for what it actually is, which is a satanic ritual. They do not want you to know that. Certainly not through the message of a person that loves God and puts Christ first in everything they do. That is the last person they want exposing the deceptions of this world. So censorship is absolutely happening, and make no mistake about it, it is going to get absolutely worse as these days continue. Like Jesus said, they hated him first. If you're a real Christian, they better be hating you. If you have people in this world that think you're a Christian but don't hate your message, that don't hate that of which whom resides within you, if they don't hate you, you might want to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I, I sincerely hope that this message blessed you. I hope that it brought some some edification to you and that it brought you closer to the understanding of where it is in this world right now that we are. Uh, if you can, sub the channel, share the videos, hit the bell for updates to keep un notifying people. For the Obviously, it's a part of the censorship. Um, they're also unsubbing people, a part of the censorship. They demonetize the channel, part of the censorship. They, they've hit me with all kinds of copyrights and told me to take down specific videos. Again, the censorship. So we are in a time of censorship on truth. Um, and that tells us that we're very, very close because that's exactly what happened with Christ when he died on that cross, and we are that close to Christ right now. We are absolutely right there where Christians are literally going to have their heads cut off as a result of being truth speakers in these days. If you can, become a Patreon of this channel. Help support the channel that way so that we can build the channel, protect the messages, and keep this, this, this channel alive. As well, if it's in your ability, hit the link for PayPal to help others. We are in de desperate need of helping others in these days. This is all a part of our walk in Christ. He said what you'd want to the least you do to me. And so I'm just asking that you guys keep mindful of that. I sincerely hope that God has blessed you, blessed you, blessed you. I love, 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 love the elect that come to this channel. And if you're new to this channel, sub. Become a part of this family. I ask that God sincerely bless you. You guys take care of yourselves. Is when you're talking to the, to the principalities and reminding the powers and telling them who you are and what's going to happen. That's when you get an attitude. We have access to God with boldness and confidence. We can go boldly to the throne of God. We can go confidently to him. But what does the devil do? He keeps bringing up your past. He keeps bringing up your failures. He keeps bringing up your shortcomings. I'm not going to God on the basis of my righteousness. Not my righteousness. I'm going on the basis of his righteousness and who he is.